Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about Lancaster Roots and Blues, a festival of music. It's the fifth year. It's going to be in March. And with us right now, we have the director, Rich Ruoff. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me again. This makes the city come alive in Lancaster. This is just a wonderful idea, and I'm so glad you're doing it. This year, the dates are March 9, 10, and 11, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right, Rich? Correct, three-day okay. festival. All right, so tell me about how many venues we're having, how many uh, concerts, that sort of thing. Yeah, we're doing uh, eight, eight different venues, 10 stages, and about 60 concerts. Okay, so some of those venues are, it's of course main stage is back. Uh, the main stage is back in the Conve mm -hmm. Lancaster Convention Center again this year, though uh, we moved it up to one of the really big ballrooms, the Commonwealth Ballroom. Uh, we, we like the, uh, the layout up there, so I think we gave that a try this year. Yeah, that'll be great. And everything seems to be within walking distance too. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's the whole point. It's a walkable festival. Mm -hmm. So you get your wristband and it allows you to go in and out of the shows and the venues as as it goes. Right. And each of these venues has a distinct personality, which is what I really like to to experience these artists, right, Rich? Yeah, you have, you know, the larger performance stages and then you have some of the grittier clubs and you have the classic old social club, the the uh, Elks Club, you know, it's just a lot of <laughs> yeah. fun. Yeah. Absolutely. You've added some new locations too. Yes, this year uh, there's a new venue opening up. It's called Zootropolis. Of course, they've been in town, mm -hmm. but they're moving their location right into downtown. And uh, they're combining themselves with a restaurant and a distillery. And uh, we're excited to be part of this new venue. And there's also a location at Altana. Altana, we, we worked with them about two years ago and they oh, asked okay. us to come back and uh, we're gonna do a couple of acoustic artists in there and they have a neat, neat stage on the second floor with a good sounding room. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this I know is a lot of work for you to put together. I can't even fathom, you know, with these 60 different concerts and all these different locations, how logistically it is. But this truly is, a, it, it's a love for you to do this, isn't it, Rich? So far it has been a love. <laughs> I, hope, I hope to make money someday, but yeah, uh, right. no, the, uh, it is a labor of love. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a, just a big music fan. I have been since I was young. I mean, that's why I ran Chameleon Club for 17 years. And, and I, this, I saw how Lancaster was booming and all these new venues were popping open. And I thought, you know, we should bring music back. I, mean, I should get back in music. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this was a neat way to tie in the whole town and do something I love. Yeah. And people come from all over for this too, don't they? That is true. Uh, we draw, I mean, obviously we draw from Lancaster County. If you're a music fan, you live in Lancaster County, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great weekend. But we draw, uh, about half of our crowd comes from outside of the county and half of that crowd, so about 25% of the people come from outside of the state. Mm. Uh, the biggest draw is New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, DC, uh, Northern Virginia. People take the train from Pittsburgh. A lot of people take the train from Pittsburgh and make a weekend of it. Uh, and then we have some people who come in to see their very favorite artists who clearly have time and money mm -hmm. and they fly in from all over the world, <laughs> but not that many, but yeah. But it's great to make a weekend out of it too. Now, when does it start on that Friday, which is uh, March 9th again? Yeah, we don't start that early. We, you know, we, we take, we start ticketing in the afternoon, but really mm -hmm. the first concert starts at about 5.30 in the afternoon and then the whole evening is jumping. Okay, and then it's all day on Saturday, starting at what time? Uh, about one o'clock is the first show on Saturday, and on Sunday morning, we start a brunch mm. at TELUS at 11 a.m. Oh, great. With Vinegar Creek constituency. They've done it every year, <laughs> and it's become a, like, you know, we try to mix it up and do different bands every year, but they're one of the few bands that comes back regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the brunch that they do. It's very popular. It's well attended. People love it. What I love about what you do, you bring in such a wide array of types of music from really all over the country and even out of the country too. And it's a great way to sample and to introduce people to different types of music and different artists with the tickets. Talk a little bit about those. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, obviously it's a it roots and blues suggest, you know, obviously blues music and we do a lot of great blues bands from all over, from Mississippi, from Texas, from Memphis, from Chicago, and of course, even, you know, Pennsylvania, Clarence Spady, mm -hmm. uh, and some of the local blues bands as well. Uh, but, you know, Roots is, in my definition, pretty broad. Uh, it's Americana, it's bluegrass, it's jazz. Uh, we even have some Roots reggae bands coming in. Uh, so that's fun, I'm doing some Celtic music this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did mention blues, great bluegrass. We have a couple of good bluegrass bands coming. Uh, and, 
even you know some rockabilly, rock and roll. Of course, yeah. you always have to have a rock band. So, Absolutely. You know, <laughs> and some soul and some funk. Uh, so we, we touch on a little bit of everything. There's something for everybody. So the way you do it is with passes, day like a day pass, two day pass, weekend. The most yeah, the most common is you either get a, a one day pass or a two day pass or a three day pass. Uh, and this year we've sold the most three day passes we've sold yet. Wow. Which I think is a big commitment for people. I love that they're doing it. Yep. Uh, it makes sense if you're coming from out of town and staying in a hotel, mm -hmm. but a lot of locals are buying them now too. So even if they can't go to every single show, they, they, you know, they'll take a few hours a day and go catch some good shows and they come back the next day and the next day. Uh, and that's exciting to see. It really is. That way you can sample a little bit of this artist and go off to another <coughs> show and that sort of thing too. Right. Well now we're going to play what we typically do, name that artist <laughs> and tell us a little bit about this. Let's talk about some of these 60 concerts and some of these artists that you're bringing in too. You have a Grammy Award winning artist coming in, Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson is, yes, uh, if people of a certain age, uh, in the early 90s he was a young, I mean he might have still been a teenager, he had a hit. He was out of Austin, Texas, and he was, you know, all the rage, and he had a hit, uh, The Cliffs of Dover. Mm. Uh, in fact, he'll be recreating that album, which, which won the Grammy, uh, at the festival. Okay, so let's check out Eric Johnson. You also have former members of the Jay Giles band, right? Yeah, uh, Magic Dick is his name. Okay. <laughs> he's, the, he's the harmonica player, he's quite the character, and, uh, I mean, a great showman, you know. I, I've been seeing him for years, so we're excited to have him on. Yeah, well, Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers are always a hit, aren't they? Fantastic live band, yeah. Yeah, to experience them, I mean, they have a following too that comes along as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, they, they were one of those, they came out of the Philadelphia region, actually he's from Delaware, uh, and when he was young, they just were the hottest thing going. I, I say one of the best bar bands in America. Mm. Uh, and then they signed a deal with Columbia Records and they were on the cover of Rolling Stone and there was all these, you know, 10 page article. Uh, and they had a, had an intense short run, and then things fell apart, which happens. But then they reform once in a while, and their mm. and their fan base around the the Mid Atlantic region is, is huge and loyal, and they come out of the woodwork. Yeah, that's great. Peterson Brothers, tell me about them. Young kids. Uh, I mean, they're not kids. This is the second year we've done them. They're also from Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think they're like 18 and 20 or 19 and 21 now brother, uh, bass player and a guitar player. And of course, they, it's a four-piece blues band. Smoking, smoking band. They've got a little bit of soul and funk too, don't they? Yeah, they mix it up a little bit, but uh, it, it's it, largely... They're the real deal. Okay, yeah. that's great. Florida soul. Well, that's uh, J.J. Gray and Mofro. Okay. I uh, love that band. Uh, it guy's a world-class performer, great singer. It's a curious thing, he's never played Central PA, mm, okay. uh, and yet he's had a really successful career all around the world. So we thought we'd pull him in, and the people who were, this will draw people in from all the major markets, because they've been watching him for 10 years. Uh, but it's a, it's a treat for Central Pennsylvania to see this guy. I, I uh, love how you put the different artist profiles on your website, and we're gonna put the website on the screen right now. You can check that out too. You can find out so much about these groups before you get there. But I love how they call them blue collared spirit over bone deep grooves. <laughs> that conjures up something, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, that's a good description, yeah. It <laughs> really does. Tell me about Kenny Neal. Kenny Neal, wow, uh, he's from Chicago uh, and uh, he, his family was in a blues band, like they were one of the more popular blues bands touring 20, 30 years ago when he was a kid. And now he's an adult and he just rips it up. He used to play at Chameleon Club when I ran it okay, uh, with his family and then solo. And then he's one of the most successful blues artists touring today. Uh, uh, but definitely a Chicago sound, electric blues. Mm. Yeah. Shamika Copeland is here. Shamika Copeland, another another great, uh, I guess Chicago sound would be the best way to describe her, but I think she's based out of New York now. Okay. Uh, her father used to play for me, uh, uh, Johnny Clyde Copeland, uh, who used to tour with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I mean, it was, mm. you know, they made records together, so there's a lot of history with this family, yeah. Samantha Fish. Samantha Fish, she was a darling. We did her three years ago, maybe mm. even four now. Uh, when she was really young, but there was some exciting about her. She's a guitar player, singer, songwriter, uh, but she can rock it, uh, like rock at the house. Uh, and then she's she's kind of maturing too. So she does the, the grittier blues and can play on a cigar box guitar and gets a great sound out of it. But she also does 
so almost a Nashville kind of country singing, which mm. is it's fun to watch her develop and see what else she can do. Is that where the Mississippi blues comes in when describing her, those sounds that you were talking about? Yeah, I would say the grittier guitar work that she does with, with the cigar box guitars, which is an interesting, yeah. uh, the way they build these kind of really vintage style guitars, yeah. yeah. That's great. We have so many more artists to go over, but we're gonna take a brief pause. Stay with us, you don't wanna miss this. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about the fifth annual Lancaster Roots and Blues. A, well, it's a celebration of music and it's a festival of music and we're with the director, Rich Ruoff. We've been telling you a little bit about some of the artists that are gonna be there. Boy, one that really gets people going is NRBQ. They are a New England stalwart. They've been around for a long time. Uh, a lot of people love that band and we're excited to have them. It's the first time we've done them. Um, they even were on an episode of The Simpsons. Oh, right, yeah, really? I mean, okay. That's how embedded into the community they wow. are. Wow, well, I saw one of the lines on um, your website. It said, they make you happy. And <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably very true. It's just a fun band. Yeah, yeah fun band, so good time. Taz, who is Taz? Taz? Yeah, Brandon Taz Niederauer. He's a young kid, he's 14 years old. He's from New York City. And uh, he's gonna be a superstar. He's a guitar player. Mm. He's a four piece rock band, you know, blues band. Um, and I've only booked a handful of child prodigies in my life. Uh, one of them is Derek Trucks when he was 13. Yes. He's gone to become one of the biggest names in blues. Uh, another one was Smokin' Joe Bonamasso, mm. who played at the uh, Giant Center last year uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, filled that. Uh, so, and I booked him when he was 14. So this kid is in that vein of ability at this age and you just know he's going places so wow. we're excited to have him. That's going to be great to check out. Somebody else I always check out that's here, Clarence Spady. He is extraordinary. Yeah, we're old friends. I love Clarence. Uh, we kind of grew up together in the business and uh, I will always have him back. Yeah, he's that I mean, good. You have to experience him. He's just phenomenal with whatever he chooses to play. I agree. He just adds a signature to it. Yes. Yeah. Little Ed and the Imperials. Yeah, they're back. Also a Chicago based uh, blues band. He's been around a long time, quite the entertainer, real showman on stage. I mean, doing rolls and flips, and uh, it, also he plays the heck out of the guitar. Indeed. This next woman, I was blown away the first time I heard her, Morgan James. Morgan James, you know, it's interesting. She started off, she was a Juilliard student and she became a star on Broadway. She starred in like five Broadway plays. Uh, I mean, starred, not just mm -hmm. sang in them. Uh, and then she's done a bunch of, uh, she became a YouTube sensation when she was making uh, songs with uh, Postmodern Jukebox who's become a really big band touring the world. Mm -hmm. And now she has her own solo career. We did her two years ago, I believe, and very well received, which is a wonderful, wonderful singer. I think one of the very best in the world. Yeah, and yeah. she's got a wonderful stage presence. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. she knows how to command. It's an interesting, because usually a Broadway singer and a bluesy soul singer don't cross paths, and she's managed to make that leap and it, but I think the stage presence comes from her experience on Broadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's just phenomenal. Johnny Nicholas. Johnny Nicholas, old Texas blues hand, uh, great player, great songwriter. Uh, he's got a really good vibe about him. When you're talking about reggae and roots and rock, the band is? The, the Meditations. There you go. Yeah, uh, they've, been, they've been in the scene for many years. Uh, we love them. I used to book them at Chameleon Club back when I ran it. Um, and I think they're still one of the better reggae bands in the world. Sax and soulful vocals, we think of who? Vanessa Collier? Vanessa Collier, we, she played a couple years ago. People loved her, she was young. Uh, another one of those uh, music school prodigies, Berkeley, or maybe, uh, maybe it was Juilliard, I can't remember. But now she's got a regular band and they've been touring the country and even the world and she's become a real player on the scene. But yeah, what a fabulous saxophone player. And from Canada, Blues Rocks. Anthony Gnome. Gnome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was just named European Musician of the Year, mm -hmm. which I find fascinating because he's from Canada. I don't know how that works. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know he plays in Europe a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, another excellent guitar player uh, in the blues and blues rock vein. Tell me about Common Heart. Common Heart is a fun band. They're based out of Pittsburgh. We always like to touch on Pittsburgh every mm -hmm. year. And uh, it's they got a 
lead singer who's just a real character and you know with a bunch of female backup singers and a horn section and great energy. Billy Burnett. Billy Burnett's from an old Burnett, uh, they're a rockabilly family. Uh, his uncle was Johnny Burnett, his father was Dorsey Burnett. They were a Memphis based band uh, and now he's, I think he's based out of Nashville. But definitely old school Americana uh, and he, this guy has the legit chops. He's played with everybody, he's hung out with the Rolling Stones. I mean, hmm. he, he's well known. And coming in from Detroit, Doug Deming, is that it? Yeah. And Jewel Tones? Yeah, Doug Deming and the Jewel Tones. Actually, he moved to Florida, but he's from he's Detroit. He's originally from Detroit. Uh, yeah. And that has a bit of a rockabilly feel to it, too. A really fun bar band, yeah. And what are we going to hear from Gabe Stillman? Gabe Stillman, I love Gabe. He's a young guy. Uh, he's uh, from, uh, I'll say Wilmington. Uh, it's... Uh, uh oh, up to Susquehanna, north of Harrisburg, <laughs> yeah. Williamsport. There you go. <laughs> uh, and uh, we started him a couple years ago, and we really like him. And we, we, we're, I think this is his third time back. He's just got a good, good feel for American blues. Well, second time back, Ray Fuller and the Blues Rockers. Yeah, he went over Gangbusters last year. Uh, they're from Ohio. Okay. And uh, he works the crowd, and he was at the Elks last year, Full House, and people loved him. So we got a lot of requests to bring him back. Slam Allen. Slam Allen, I, I love Slam Allen. The first time I met him, he was a kid, you know, young, maybe young 20s, and he was playing with uh, James Cotton when they first played at Chameleon Club. Mm -hmm. James Cotton's one of the great harmonica players of all time. Uh, and so, but I thought, wow, this guy on guitar is amazing. Well, Slam now tours the world and he has his own band and, uh, and we're excited to have Slam. We're gonna hear some great saxophone with Ron Holloway band, aren't we? Yeah, Ron Holloway, uh, it, it might've been a misspelling. It's O L, there's two O's, no, yeah. Okay. So Ron Holloway, uh, he's played here before with Sweet Lita, who's also mm. playing again, right. but he has his own band. And of course, Ron Holloway's played with the, Ro uh, not the Rolling Stones, the Almond Brothers uh -huh. for many years, because they don't play anymore. So, uh, you know, he's based out of the DC area and uh, great player, great session player, great live player, yeah. I saw Ursula Ricks last year with Ursula Ricks Project. She's right. great. Tell me, she's back again. Yeah, I have her back. I love her. She's from Baltimore. Uh, real gritty blues singer. Mm -hmm. uh, real soulful. And, you know, it's interesting. She didn't become a big national star, hasn't toured the world. But every good town has somebody like Ursula Ricks, and Baltimore has Ursula. So. Yeah, she's good. Billy Kemp? Billy Kemp, also another Baltimore product. Uh, I actually bought one of his records way back in the 80s when he was a kid, and I loved it. Uh, and then he, I used to book him at Chameleon Club, and I had him open up for Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers, uh, and this was probably around 1990, and Tommy loved him, and he needed a new guitar player, so he hired Billy, and Billy went on tour with him, and they, they toured the world together. Wow. And then Billy has gone on to do other stuff, some mountain folk and Appalachian-type music, mm -hmm. and then his, now he's more in the singer-songwriter vein, but he can do it all. Wow. You've got a 20-piece orchestra. Yeah, we coming every year. We try and do some kind of big band thing, and and uh, this year it's the Corsair, Corsair Blue yeah. Jazz Band. And I think what the founders from Manheim Township. Yeah, they were most of them went to Manheim Township. They were in the high school band together, and okay. was, this was back in the day. And uh, they had a good jazz instructor, a good good band instructor, and they've always stayed in touch. And they're all not all of them are professional musicians, but they've always stayed in touch, mm -hmm. and they play together regularly. And uh, this will be fun to have. Tell me about Happy Sally. Happy Sally's great. He, he plays a lap steel guitar. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I knew him when he was a kid working at the music store. And uh, then he reached out and said, hey, I got this band. And I gave it a listen and said, wow, that's really good. So we're, we're, we're happy to have them. You've got some folk, too. Is this Cordy? Is it Byron? Cordy Byron. He's, he's a little bit of everything. He, I mean, he's a, he's a blues artist. Uh, he's local. Uh -huh. uh, has a lot of fans around here locally. Uh, but he can touch. He's a singer-songwriter as well. Yep. There are some great local bands that you have. One of those that I love, it's the Latin, the jazz, the French, and you know who I'm talking about, Rue de la Palme? Oh, right. They are, it is, it's definitely a more of a subdued uh, jazz thing, uh, but I really like it. If you saw uh, like a Woody Allen's movie, mm -hmm. Midnight in Paris, yes. it's that type of yes, music. Yes, it is. Yeah. And acoustic too, right? Yeah, it's acoustic, yeah. Yeah, that's great. These guys are wonderful players. And if you are a fan of Mama Tried, which I know is a big band around here, that uh, they'll be playing there as well, too. Yeah, we love Mama Tried. And Willie Marble Experience. That's, sure. That's yeah, another we, one, too, yeah. right? 
and B O T L. Stands for Blues on the Loose. Yeah. Uh, and uh, their lead singer is a uh, is a harmonica player, and he actually has the distinction of playing the grand opening of Community Club in 1985 when he was young. Wow. Uh, and he was in a band called AWOL. He seems to have a thing for bands with initials. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can check everything out on your website. We're going to put the website up on the screen. And once again, this year's dates are in March. And what, they're 9, 10, 11? Uh, that is correct. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And we can find out about the passes, day pass, two pass, uh, the IP pass. There's all this information that's available there, too. Once again, it's eight locations with 10 stages. And last year, I believe you said you had about 9,000 people. You're expecting 10 this year, right? Yeah, I think we'll break 10,000 yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. All right, we covered a lot, but we've got some final thoughts, and we'll have those for you when we return. Stay with us. We've been having a great time talking about who's coming to Lancaster Roots and Blues this year. The locations, too, back at the Marriott again, and going to be up in the ballroom. The Chameleon has two locations. Telus has two locations, right? Elks, Village, Zetropolis, uh, 26 East at Altona.